say hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome back to the journal room. Uh, I am Miss Natalie or Natalie Capellick. This is Nixon. Theo Nixon. And we have with us today uh, Katarina, Michaela, and Elena. And before we get started, I don't know how long Theo is going to hang with us in the journal room today. Um, Theo, do you want to show them what you worked on in your journal? Yeah. Okay, so let's, we're going to show them. So if you remember, Theo has a really big journal where I show them this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what Theo has been working on. This will tell you a little bit about what we're looking forward to this week. Theo, tell them what's on there. A ladder. A ladder, that's right. And what saint is that? Mm -hmm. John. Yeah, can you say a little louder? It's hard. It's hard. St. John is hard. So you can see Theo made his own ladder. <laughs> and can you say saint? And that's St. John? Yes. Yeah. So that's what Theo worked on in his book. Thanks for sharing, dude. Mm -hmm. And do you want to share anything else? Do you want to share really quick what you did what? for Sunday? Here, go yes. get that one over there. So Theo also did for Mom. Sunday the cross, veneration of the cross. Mom. What? Mom, my ice cream. Sure. Why don't you get your, your get your icon, get your cross icon first? Okay. So Theo, come over here, dude. What's what did you do on this one? The Lala Jaws. Yeah. And what's what's this thing right here? Mm. What's that? Mm. What is that? Cross. That's the cross. Mm -hmm. So Theo took the time to venerate the cross. Mom, I helped him down here. So this is what Theo has been working on in his journal. So we normally talk about to our younger journalers toward the end. I figured today we would talk mm -hmm. toward the beginning. So Theo, can, do you have any, you want to say anything to everybody? Mm -hmm. What do you want to say? Rinse, sucking. In store. All right. Can you say bye? Bye. <laughs> All right, everybody. So that was our, our guest this week. It was Theo. Uh, so now I'm going to turn it over to Olena. She's going to talk to us a little bit. Theo gave us a little hint as to what this week was about, but I'm going to let her uh, talk to you all about it. Yeah, Theo did a great job, actually. Anyway, so I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Um, so this Sunday, um, the fourth in our pilgrimage towards Pascha, the church holds up an example of asceticism, a great saint whose life and writings can inspire those who honor him. St. John Climacus, or St. John the Latter, was the abbot of St. Catherine's Monastery on, in the 6th century. So Climacus is a Greek word that means of the latter, and he is named because of the book that he wrote primarily for ascetics. Um, the book is also both challenging and helpful uh, for lay people, and it is called The Ladder of Divine Ascent. It's not going forward. There we go. Um, so who is St. John? Uh, he is known for what he lived and taught and passed on, not for where he came from. Uh, we do know that St. John was a monk who chose to live his life uh, to the fullest for Christ beginning at an early age. He was only 16 years old when he went to live at St. Catherine's Monastery, and when he was 20, he was tonsured a monk, and he lived as a monk for more than 70 years. And many of those years, he lived in a cave and he lived a very, uh, lived a life of humility. We also know that St. John's pursuit of holiness has influenced the lives of Orthodox Christians for every century that he walked on earth for. Um, he, his words in the Ladder of Divine Ascent encourage all of us to continue our journey towards the kingdom of God. And then here's just some more facts. Um, his entreaty that we uh, let the remembrance of Jesus be present with each breath has challenged Orthodox Christians to live their lives in the quietness that leads a person to God through constant prayer. So, and this prayer has come to be known as the Jesus Prayer. 
He humbly led his monks and all Orthodox Christians since then, passing down tools that we can use to grow deeper in our faith. So St. John stands as a witness to the spiritual effort that is necessary for both our Lenten journey and for our entrance into the kingdom of God. We must therefore take steps to become detached from things of this world and to cling more closely to God alone. Fasting, prayer, and almsgiving are our spiritual resources. So during Great Lent, the church reminds us to draw our attention away from daily distractions, desires, and passions, and to place it once again on our ultimate goal, union with our merciful and holy God. I have attached an icon, um, and it's the icon for this Sunday. The ladder represents our path in life and how we want it to lead to Christ. When we're on the ladder, we are surrounded by angels to help guide us there. However, the dark figures are meant to remind us of temptations that can pull us off the ladder and away from Jesus. The bottom part of the icon shows a life without accepting Jesus's love and is lived in a dark place. On the left of the icon, we see St. John preaching and in other variations, we may see the Virgin Mary and St. John the Baptist remind us uh, to always pray and keep God in the center of our lives. So we, I talked about that he wrote, um, some writings uh, that our church uses and those are and the most famous one is the ladder of divine ascent and for the faithful the ladder is the spiritual guide on how to attain perfection in 30 steps and each step is the desired virtue that brings us our soul closer to god so i found a really neat um Alana, before you go on i'm sorry you have you're doing you have so much awesome stuff here but go back to that last slide I almost couldn't listen to you because that 30 steps blob is so mesmerizing. Sorry. <laughs> it's not an important slide. <laughs> not to interrupt you too much. Keep going. Sorry. And I, I just have to let you know, I love it. I could sit here and watch that blob all day. Go. <laughs> so a really cool uh, resource I found um, from the Greek archdiocese, um, it's so the ladder of divine ascent in general is a very long piece of writing. It has like more than 300 pages and it's very complicated um, for, I think, especially youth to understand. And I found that somebody from the Greek archdiocese uh, kind of modernized it for lay people, um, what the 30 steps are. So on some of them are like on freedom from anger or meekness. So it'd be bending without breaking. Um, some other ones are keeping our mouth shut, practicing obedience, living as strangers, and then speaking the truth, escaping from boredom, which I thought is an interesting one, but it's definitely something um, that I think, I don't know. I wouldn't think that's something that like could bring closer to God, but it definitely can because I can think about ways on how I can improve as a Christian versus just doing nothing. Um, staying awake and staying alert. And then here are the last ones, um, learning how to be still, uh, discerning God's will for our lives, and then growing beyond our passions. So here's just another example of the icon. Um, again, it's just an example that our temptations can knock us off, but I also think we can always get back on that ladder and, go, and continue our journey up to God. And I would like to end today with just a quote from the ladder of divine ascent and it says ascend brothers ascend eagerly and be resolved in your hearts to ascend and hear him who says come let us go up to the mountain of the lord and to the house of god who makes our feet like hinds feet and sets us on high places that we may be victorious with his song run i beseech you with him who said let us hasten until we attain to the unity of faith and of knowledge of god to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, who when he was baptized in the 30th year of his visible age, attained the 30th step in the spiritual ladder. Since God is indeed love, to whom be praise, dominion, power, and is whom is and was and will be the cause of all goodness throughout infinite ages. Amen. Oh, I was going to make you go back to the icon. Oh, I can. If I, can. If I had that dream, I would be terrified. <coughs> right? Yes. <laughs> but, you know, the ultimate There's goal is something yeah. good. I mean, 
So I was just going to say, like, for we looked at this icon uh, actually um, during Faith, Hope, and Love. Miss Sharissa, I think, started to look at this icon with some of the kids, and um, there's a lot going on, and it's a lot to think about. Um, and you know, Elena, like when you said, it's you know, we we fall off the ladder, but we can get back on you know, or we get pulled down a couple rungs and sort of that's kind of where we're at at Lent, right? It might be getting harder to climb. Um, and that's because those little dark guys don't want us to climb higher. They want us to fall and slip and get distracted. As you can see, like with some of them, they're just distracting them. Because if you get distracted, you miss your rung, right? I do that all the time when I'm climbing ladders and then I fall down. Um, but, you know, they tell you, it's kind of like Peter walking on the water. Like if he would have just kept looking at Christ, he wouldn't have sunk. Um, so, you know, they say, just keep looking up at Christ, you know, and try not to be distracted. Yeah. I don't think in this one, Alana, does it show anybody helping other than the angels helping? Not that I, I can go back to the other one too. So maybe there's a, in other icons, you'll also see, um, you'll see the people helping each other as well, which I kind of like, yeah. See like this guy in the middle, he's like reaching for his friend's foot. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, don't fall into that red, scary serpent. Mm -hmm. I'll try to catch you. So I kind of like that because you see the angel helping, but then you yeah. see like the friend reaching out for his friend. Yeah. So I think that's like, for me, that's an important thing to remember during Lent is we're also here for each other of course. to keep climbing. All right. Thank you. I, I don't know if I can ever ask you to use this particular one again, because it's all mesmerizing. Now there are little paisleys swimming around. It is the most meditative presentation ever. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Anytime. So Michaela cuts it in a, um, you know, after hearing what Elena sort of had to say to us, what do you think you might be focusing on with St. John of the Ladder? Well, I know I personally was talking about in my journal um, what temptations I have that are, um, you know, during Lent or throughout the whole year, um, what specific temptations I struggle with. And then another part is um, what I can do to overcome those temptations. You know, when, when I'm faced with them, when I approach them, what are steps that I can take to, um, you know, pass them up, not have the temptations and bring myself closer to Christ. So those were the things that I was definitely um, focusing on in my journal this week. I was going to say, Michaela, what did you, what do you, would you think after learning a little bit about St. John of the Ladder? Um, Katarina took my first one, which was temptations. And <laughs> just that's like a big thing of the ladder, right? It's like if you're knocked down, figure out how to get back up. I was also reading about John earlier and I was talking to my dad about it too. And from what both said, one of the biggest like roles of the 30, like one of the main things is love which is at least what my dad's. I don't know if that's like right, but <laughs> um, he did say one of the big things is getting to a place of love. Um, so that's what I'm focusing on. I focused on selfless love last week as well, but I think it's important to just keep delving into like different types of love. Um yeah no, I think you know point. like uh, just looking at things in more of a loving stance you know like if I don't know my dog does something annoying like not to look at it as like annoying but like coming from a loving like I just love that you're focusing so much on love <laughs> this one Michaela I'm just you know I I find myself like getting annoyed for things for no reason and not looking at it from like a stance of love and understanding. So 
I um I was looking up, you know, I, I really liked that how you found a lot of that, you know, St. John steps and then like the modern sort of way to look at it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as we're looking in our prayer journal, you know, Michaela's going to look at, you know, deepening love and other aspects of it. And then, you know, how cuts it in, I was going to look at it. I also think, you know, maybe looking at those 30 steps and, you know, the, you know, as we're working in our prayer journals, that the Orthodox Church has a wealth of prayers that we don't know that we have. And, you know, we have a prayer for despondency and dis- despair. There is a prayer for anxiety, which a lot of people don't know. Um, there is a prayer for demonic influence. There is a prayer for our enemies. You know, there are prayers for peace. Um, you know, there are prayers to be uh, thankful after you've had maybe something that's been troubling or, or difficult in your life. So I think, and, and, you know, always make sure that you're going to a credible source when you're looking for prayers. Um, you know, one of the, 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 web, the websites from the different Orthodox jurisdictions, um, but also there are some great prayer books out there that, you know, I, uh, that you can take prayers out of to put into your prayer journal, um, one is my daily Orthodox prayer book by Father Anthony Conieris, which I think is a great prayer book. Um, and then there's also um, Hear Me, which is a prayer book that's been put together specifically for teenagers and young adults. And I think that's another great resource to try to find prayers when you're kind of battling against your temptations. Off the record, do you know what my favorite prayer book to use is? Why is that to be with the record? Go for it. What is it? My one that I somehow came home from All Saints Camp with. Your camp prayer book? Yeah, I have one that's like one of those spiral bound ones. I'm not sure if I just oh, came home with them, it once. When we rebound them, we gave them away. So you oh, probably may, got one maybe of Maybe that's how. But yes, I took that to college with me and used it every day. Um, I also love the camp prayer books. And, you know, that's why if anyone were to ever say, can I take one? I would say yes. To me, I feel like I love, not only do I love the prayers, but when I pray them, it, it takes me back to camp. Like, I feel like my soul is like in St. Thomas Chapel. So like they have like an extra special meaning. I get that. That's kind of nice and special, especially because we're all camp people here. We can all understand where she's coming from. So yeah, I think finding prayer books and um, different church services that help you come closer to God are really important. And those are things that you can reference in your prayer journal. So for anyone else here who might be a camp person, if you're not, we're going to share with you anyway. Um, At All Saints Camp, one of our favorite things to pray there is the Akathis of glory to God for all things. And one year, um, the campers actually wrote verses of it along our Riverwalk prayer trail. And um, I just find sometimes verses from that particular Akathis are, you know, bring me closer to Christ or what, you know, are very meaningful. So I think this is a good week to think about that. Like what prayers help us when we are tempted? What prayers help us when we're struggling? Um, Because it's great. The church does have prescribed prayers for us right morning prayers evening prayers and those are the ones that help us um with our discipline and which is interesting we have two people in a medical field someone who is in a theater field and most people would think theater people are just artsy but they don't realize how disciplined you have to be to be in the arts um you know Uh, that discipline in your prayer life is then what can help you open up into finding other prayers. And uh, does that make sense? Do you guys find that? Yes, no, still struggling. (laughs) I am, I'm struggling every day with my prayer life. So uh, yeah, 
That sounds cool. Elena, thanks for the awesome meditative slideshow tonight. Anytime. <laughs> Anything else anybody else wanted to add in tonight? This is kind of an easy week. You don't have anything you want to share, show in your journals? How are your journals looking? <laughs> Ooh, nice. Katarina, you and Theo shared colors. Oh, I was just saying that, but I was muted. Oh, but so Katarina, I love that you picked colors that match Theo's. We have a connection. <laughs> He's good with color some days. All right. Well, if that's it, everybody, uh, thank you so much. And uh, we'll ask Elena to put uh, what she found uh, in our journal classroom. And same thing, if you two come up with anything extra that you'd like to share uh, with everyone, that would be great. And we'll talk to you next week. Oh, and it's not gonna. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.